Anybody ask me, <laughs> don't say anything, don't claim anything. I've told this story, it is what it is. Just shut up. But, uh, so it's basically a Gibson Les Paul uh, custom. And you're probably, and if anybody looks, you're going to, you've got that wrong. No. Because there's a thing. The custom, this is a simple thing. And I, you know, people were calling me out on, on my other Randy guitar. The, the uh, you know, the white one, the off-white. I put a, on the custom, there's two screws. On the standard, there's three. This is the standard plate. But there's only two screws because it's a custom and I only had the standard plate. And I was gonna I'm probably gonna put the uh, the chrome I'm gonna have a chrome one made. Not a chrome, a brass one made. Hey Chihuahua. Anyways, it is what it is what I say it is. This is a Gibson. It's been completely when I bought it, I got this one and that other one. They were both white. They were both. I'm like, holy crap! Two Randy Rhodes Gibson. One was an Epiphone. One one was a Gibson. The Gibson's neck was shot, and this is an '80s, I think, or what? Yeah, but it's com it's been completely redone. This is all new. All the bindings new. The paint is obviously new. Everything is new. And this is a Seymour Duncan, and this is a Seymour Duncan. And it's a Duncan, just a Duncan distortion, I'm pretty sure, and a 59. I wasn't, I'm just like, just put it in there, because I probably won't play it, and then I end up kind of liking it. But I don't really play it that much, because, I don't know. I like it, but I don't really like it. So let's see if I can get a better sound, let her see if mess with the amps and see what happens. Okay. Eh, that pick might be better. Okay, you don't want me to talk? Let me think of something to talk about then. Thank you. 
something since I've got a well it's not really a real rain well sure it's a combination of Randy stuff um oh and it's got a very cool this is I think this is a Gene Simmons uh this is supposed to go on my Simmons uh axe base but oh yeah so I posted some stuff and here's the thing, and it's not even, it is personal actually. So there's this guy that ran, you know, whatever. I don't know him. And he wants, he says he's, uh, he, I don't know when, it seems like a year ago, he was trying to sell his guitar. And I was thinking about buying it, but I already have one like that that's actually worth way more, so I didn't buy it. But I thought it was a really nice. It's a Rhodes guitar, so I tried to get one of my friends to buy it, but no one's buying that stuff right now, so. So he says he's a collector. I'm like, you know, I got stuff, but he wants, like, you know, sell me stuff, sell me stuff. I'm like, I'm not selling anything. I got nothing. And he's like, well, I collect autographs. I'm like, all everything that I have is autographed to me, so why would you want that? Plus, I'm not selling any of it. I'm not selling my autograph. I do sell those, believe it or not, for five or six, seven bucks, depending on the flyer. Um. So I, he's like, I collect autographs, and that's you know that's my thing. So I get in these, really not, and these are out to everybody. And you know who knows how many people are going to end up watching this. Woo! They'll see this and they'll go, that's eh, a fake. It's not. But, uh, it <laughs> gets your attention at least. <laughs> so, so I get in these autographs. They're Motley Crue signing in to Sunset Sound, the studio that they recorded like the first two albums or three albums. Well, I don't know if they recorded Too Fast for Leather, but anyways, the, there's a sign in sheet. They gotta sign in and sign out, and they gotta sign for stuff that's being delivered, tapes, uh, whatever. So there's everybody signing: Mick, Tommy, Nikki, Vince, the producer, 
uh, Tom Warman, I think it was, and uh, the engineers, everybody that worked on that flipping album is signing in and out on these sheets. And I know the person who has them. And they're trying to, they're, they want to sell them. I don't want them. I'd like to have them, but I, that's a lot of the money. It's just, you know, it's other things to do. So I, this guy, I'm like, this guy will absolutely want these. I mean, if he's serious about this. So I present them, to, you know, here, dude, look at, you'll never find anything like this. Silence for like a month or two. I'm like, I knew it. Because no picture. If, so, this is me. If they don't post a picture, if they don't have a picture of themselves, I don't care what. Like, I don't post me now. I post me later because the picture is more eye catching instead of like a dude like me. There's a million guys with have friggin' out hats and goatees or beards or whatever. That's not, you know, the other one is, you know, black hair, white, you know, death, gray, fit, vampire with blood. That's eye-catching. That's why I use it as my profile picture on everything. YouTube, Facebook, everything. So, the, the other things, <laughs> Twitter. So, anyways, this guy pops out of the blue. Hey, I see you're taking uh, pictures of your guitars. I thought they were all in storage. Or you know, hey, bro, right there, that drives me nuts. I don't know why, but as soon as people started saying, hey, bro, I'm like, shut the F up. To me, that's like doofus stoner talk. I was always like, hey, dude, to everybody. Boys, girls, men, women, children, dogs, cats, hey, dude. But bro bugged me. Because, I don't know, it just sounded dumb. So this guy is always like, hey, bro. And I'm like, nah! And he doesn't have a picture of himself. So I'm like, I'm always suspicious of people like that because you don't know enough about them. And if, you're not, if they're not going to put, their, put their picture up, it bugs me. So he's like, I see the guitar, you know, because I put up a few pictures of some Kiss guitars. Just a couple, like three or four, like two jean bases, uh, my custom Ibanez with a, you know, Kiss Love Gun stuff on it, and one of my Ace Freely wins. I got four Ace Freely Les Pauls. I got like eight Iceman guitars, some Kiss, some not, and you know, I got like 20-something Kiss guitars. No, I'm not going to put them all up. I'm not gonna bring. I never bring guitars out just to take pictures to put them up. The only time I just put up pictures is because I have a picture of them. I haven't taken a picture of a guitar in years. Like this one, I took pictures of it when I got it back in 2016. 16, I think. Yeah, yeah. Because 16, I was starting to be able to play more consistently. And I figured, cool, I'll go start spending more money on getting my guitars fixed up. Because this was just sitting there. It was uh, the off-white, but the neck, I told you, was shot. The truss rod is broken. So I said, just go through it and totally redo it. And, you know, do it the off-white. He was going to shoot it so it already looked aged. And then when it came down for him to do it, I said, wait a minute. Because what? I go, do a polka dot, like the Flying V. And this guy that works on my guitars, uh, Rich, he knew Randy. He was his, uh, he did his guitars when he was a local guy. So he's like, hey, cool. He didn't care. He'll do anything I tell him. So he did it, and it turned out pretty good, I think. And we were debating on putting on a, you know, but I'm like, no, this is cool. And I ordered, you know, special because this is the knob I use the most so it's a black and white speed knob and all the others are white like on his when he was allowed to pick what colors Sharon made him turn everything black on the V for diary because she's an idiot 
So, anyways, this guy just pops up and he's like, "So you're taking? I thought all your guitars were in storage." I'm like, "Dude," I'm, or no, I'm like, "Bro," because that's a sarcastic way of me talking to him. They're just pictures. They're still in storage. And I said something else, and then he came back at me like, "Oh yeah," I'm like, "Dude, what's up? You know, I found those autographs for you, and nothing happened. You know, you drop off the face of the earth." And I won't tell you what he says, but it's just like. Like, really, dude? For months, I was looking for stuff for this guy because he kept asking. And I thought, well, maybe he is serious. So I'm going to find him some friggin' autographs that'll just freak his ball. And then he goes, poof, nothing. So he says he's been sick. I've been sick. For a whole month, I couldn't move because of my back. I did one video. Remember? One video when I, my back was hurt. And I was jacked up on painkillers, but I did it. And I still did my radio show. I was still online. I just didn't make videos. It was too painful to sit. And you guys want all this talking. So here's the talking. So this is the thing. Not just that, but I'm trying to warn people that there's a place that says authentic autographs or whatever that is that's the one that are trying to sell that Randy Rhodes guitar or the the fake Les Paul the 70s fake Les Paul with the entire Blizzard and Tommy Aldridge and Rudy Sarzo so they got everybody on this junk copy it's not even an Ibanez it's just something it's not a Lotus either. I got to find see the headstock. It's just a knockoff of a knockoff. It's probably a Chinese piece of crap. So I'm like, it's not right. It's not right. The Aussie is too perfect. And he never signs his Aussies. The Aussie's too whacked out. His signatures are crap. Always. So this Aussie is too perfect. And I know the guy who's doing it. So then... I go in and I start looking at the stuff on this website that is selling that guitar. They have another 1970 fake, the exact same guitar. The exact same guitar as the Blizzard autographs, but it's a Jimi Hendrix. It's got Jimi Hendrix and everybody that played in his band on the same guitar, a 1970s you see what's wrong here? That's just as funny as the Zach Wow guitar with Randy Rhodes' autograph on it. How did that happen? It can't happen. And this place, that's why I put the name of the place up on Facebook. Do not buy anything. They got, I don't know if any of you guys are Beatles fans, but they got this one cover that they were going to call, they call the Butcher Baby cover. Which is, you know, was actually where uh, Alice got the idea for Dead Babies. Where they're like in, you know, doctor's overcoats with blood all over them and, and baby, doll, baby doll parts all over and they're holding axes. Really? I think it's absolutely the freaking coolest album cover they would have ever had. But no way. They got it released, a few of them in England and, and a couple got over here and then BAM! This is a 60s. There's no way. And they switched it. So only a few got out. This guy's got like 10 of those albums signed by every Beatle. And he's selling them for like three grand. If you can just find that album, it's worth like 50 or 100 grand. Which means this place is full of crap. So I'm trying to warn people about the fake Randy stuff. And they're like, will you share? Because man, I'm like, I'm sure I have his autograph. I have Ozzy's. I've got all of their autographs. Except for Lee Kerslake. Actually, I don't. I do not have his. I should try to get it, but he's kind of dying, so I kind of feel like a dick. So, probably won't happen. And I never buy autographs from anybody unless I really know them. That's why I really know this girl with the Motley Crue ones. That's why I'm this guy. He's giving me the BS run around. I'm not gonna look for nothing. 
I've got enough. He's he, There's a lot of money right there for this, and anybody that wants it. So if you're in the Motley Crew and you want all the band's signatures and you got a piece of history, this is when they're, you know, recording Theater of Pain, which was Entertainment or Death. It was actually supposed to be in the movie they switched that. It was actually going to be called TV and Violence. And you can find several... Uh, Interviews where Nikki says, yeah, the next album is going to be called TV and Violence. And then it was Theater of Pain. I'm like, I like TV and Violence. So there you go. <laughs> It's not much, you know, it's just talking about the stuff that I've been dealing with. This, But it's here's the thing. To me, Randy makes me happy to think about him when he was alive. I don't like to think about what happened. I try not to. And I don't like getting in arguments or trying to explain a thousand times to the same two or three people things I know for a fact. And it always seems to get that way when I start dealing with Randy Road fans. And Kiss. Not just Randy. But Randy is kind of like a strange cult following. And how this is how it's weird to me. Because I knew the guy. He was just a dude that walked around town. He was in a band. He was nice. I took lessons only because my friend took lessons from him. Not because I thought he was anything great. He just turned out to be very talented on guitar. Really cool looking, really nice guy. And when the world discovered him, it just started blowing up. He was just as surprised as everybody else was. That holy crap, you know, I'm I'm gonna be I'm the hot you know, the newest, you know, voted number one guitar player in whatever magazine. He every good when you would go to the shows, half, at least half of the people were there for Randy. And the other half just to see what the bumbling drunk idiot would do. Seriously. People that were into Ozzy, you know, Ozzy, that's what I think. Stoner, metal, the same ones that were into Sabbath. Not into that crap. And neither was Randy, he really wasn't. 
and, but they're like, yeah, Randy wasn't a heavy metal guy. Dude, he liked hard rock. He liked heavy guitar. He did not like Black Sabbath because they were like, bleh, 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 bleh. and he told me that when he was teaching me Sabbath Buddy Sabbath. <laughs> said they were too plotting they like to plot around and do this because that's not my that's not what i'm into this is way before he even knew he was going to be in a band with ozzy because i just said can you teach me that song and could teach, he taught me a few songs but what he really wanted me to do was work on my lead which i still need to do he goes your rhythm's fine it's your lead that you gotta really you know and he'd say you know just when you're in school just go through the scales in your head I'm like, really? That'll work? And it did. Because I knew once I got to the guitar, I knew where the scale was. So that was good. Because not all guitar players do. And I'd memorize, okay, this is A. So I can play A or D. I can solo in A or D up in this, you know, or here is it E or, you know. Just stuff. That is very helpful to know when you start wailing away. At least you're in the right key. Like I was, I played with guitar players that just they knew that they would just solo in the same two or three areas, no matter what key we were playing in. Like if we were in C, he would solo in E or A, and if we were in D, he would solo. And sometimes it would hit or miss, which is stupid. That's why I kicked them out of the band. I broke the band up and then put it back together just to get rid of them.
Okay, that's enough. Now, the guy, you've probably... If, I don't even know if you're going to watch the video, but... I'm not mad at you, but just don't jerk me around, man. If you want these autographs, jump on it. Because now everybody... The offer's out to everybody. You want these Motley Crue stuff, and I have some Aussie stuff, too, from this person. I'm not selling anything. I'm selling them f for somebody. But I know that they are... They're real. This is not the bull crap like I've been posting. I post that guitar of Randy's, Ozzy and all them, because it's impossible. It's not impossible. It's highly improbable that that happened, that they were signed. He, got, he gets the whole band and the guys that replace him, and you got to look at the pins. And, uh, you know, is it the same pin? Is it the same session? Because usually when you go to somebody, you either bring your pin if you're trying to, like, hijack a band and get autographs like I've tried to do with, like I did with a bunch of bands when I was a kid. You bring your own pin and what you want signed. Never a guitar. I did bring a back glass for my Ted Nugent pinball machine to a Ted show, wrapped in a blanket, and sat it on the bar, behind the bar, and then when the show was over, the guy, the bartender gave it to me. I went backstage and said, hey, I need to get this signed. And yes, Ted, and Ted did it because he remembered me from like 20 years prior to that, which is amazing. Ted Nugent's friggin' mind is sharp as a friggin' cack. It's unbelievable. But uh, that's a whole other thing. So there you go. So I don't have to play Eternal Darkness anymore because Katrina has heard it and she likes all the parts. Right, Katrina? Right. Okay. And I'm sorry I was giving you such a hard time with Pretty Boy Floyd, but they're a fake band. There, everybody knows the Pretty Boy Floyd story, right? They were a manufactured band, like a boy band. This group got together, auditioned thousands of guys, got these four guys that didn't know each other, put together the band. Now they needed songs. Well, one of the guys they auditioned used to play in a band called Carrie Doll. I think his name, yeah, his name is Ariel Stills or something like that. Anyways, he gave them his demo tape. They used all of those songs, like, 